Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. Welcome to the Keep Your Active YouTube channel. On today's video, we are diving into how to create a bullet journal inside of Notion. This is going to be an exciting video, so stay tuned for this full feature. <laughs> So guys, as you can imagine, let's kick things off with a few messages. The first of the messages is that we will be having the creator of the Blurt Journal, Ryder Carroll, here on the YouTube channel this week. I'm not sure whether it's going to be posted before or after this video, but he will be on this channel to discuss his latest book and the methodology behind the Bullet Journal. It's going to be quite an exciting podcast or YouTube feature. We did a video, I think it was about two, three weeks ago, uh, and it's going to be available very, very soon. The second one is to check out Rebecca Ford's YouTube channel. She has been posting so many great Notion videos. I'm going to include it below um, because she's doing such a great job in helping people find and improve the way that they use Notion. I love her working practice and use of Notion. She did a great one on task management that also included features of journaling in there too. So feel free to check that one out in the comments below. And the third and final message is to join the Notion Made Simple Facebook group. We have over 750 members in the last two weeks and it'd be great to have you there. Whether you're a beginner or intermediate, you can learn, post questions and also learn about what Notion is developing for the future. So I'm really excited. So feel free to join that one. I'll be there and loads of other people from this uh, Facebook or, or YouTube channel will be there too. Anyway guys, let's dive into today's video. Today's video is focusing on creating a bullet journal experience inside of Notion. I've done a mock-up. I did a mock-up last week of it. Uh, this is what it will look like by the end of it. And I based it off the video that Brian Carroll posted, I think five, five to seven years ago. I can't really remember. It's been plenty uh, a while ago. So you can see here that this is what we'll aim to create today from scratch so that you know how to do it and apply it to your experience. And the great thing about bullet journaling is this is really a bare bone structure. Uh, obviously you can add so much to it, adapt it to your own methodology and even go further with the book that they recently released. So guys, in today's video, we're creating all of that. So guys, we're gonna create a brand new page. I'm gonna call it my bullet journal to really customize it. And uh, I'm gonna give it a lovely icon. And the great thing is you can customize the icon whenever you like. So I'm gonna put uh, this uh, sort of book here. And of course you can add your own cover to it. That's actually quite a fitting cover with the, uh, with the actual cover of the book being blue. So I'm gonna leave it like that. When I get started with a page, I tend to add a quote. So I'm gonna add a quote and say, Francesco's uh, bullet journal process. And that gives a nice entrance to the page. And what I'm gonna do is just below that is I'm gonna create a subheader. And we're gonna start by creating the index first. The index is almost where you find everything. And it's a good starting point when you're creating a bullet journal inside of Notion. So I'm gonna put a divider between those just so it's a bit clear. And I'm also gonna to go to the bottom or nearer the bottom and create another subheader called collections. This will make sense a little later into this video. We're gonna start with the index. So to start things off, I'm gonna create this structure of each page. And then I'm gonna go into the pages and add a bit more detail. Now the first of the pages is future log. Future log, if I just create a new page, I'm gonna title it future log. I'm gonna add a road, well not toilet, I got a toilet recommendation. I'm gonna add a roadmap and click add cover. So that's great. All I have to do is go back now. I've created that structure. If I wanted to, I could go to rename and add the page number. But if in this case, I don't actually have to, uh, that's one of the benefits of obviously doing it digitally. As you can imagine, I'm gonna create a month view. A month view is essentially allowing you to see what's coming up in the month. I'm gonna give it uh, a calendar view and I'm gonna add a cover as well. So if I go out of this, I've got future log. Future log is for your next three plus months. You could view, view your next couple of months in here. So it could be, you know, everything all the way till April. We'll be creating our page in a second. Month view is for pretty much your tasks and your calendar activities for that this month or next month that you want to have in, in view. And I'm gonna create a day view. So I'm gonna create page and day view. I'm gonna go and add a lovely, not money, a lovely sun to that one. And I'm gonna add cover here. 
So if I go back to my bullet journal, I've created the real bare bone structure of it, the future log for your future months ahead, and it could be whatever planning in advance, um, and the month view to actually see your tasks and calendar, as well as a day view for planning and journaling your day. Now down here, I'm actually gonna uh, add a divider just below this one. I, 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 oh, I think I've already done it. Um, so I'm gonna add a new page called checklists, this is for my notes that are static. So I will click checklists and I'm actually gonna create it with this one here. I'm also gonna create uh, a page for past months and I'll explain why I did that at the end. So I'm gonna put a uh, boat there. So if I go out here, I've created all the pages I really need to make now. Um, so as you can see here, let's start with the future log. Now the future log should be a place where you coordinate your next couple of months. Now, a lot of people would argue, let's just create a calendar, a calendar in line here. But in this case, I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm gonna go to header, and I'm gonna type in the next couple of months for the next six months and have that here. So there we go, I've created a few of the months minus spelling mistake for February, I can never spell it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm really simply gonna keep the next three months down this left-hand panel. I'm gonna move February up here. I'm gonna move March up here against uh, these ones, and I'm gonna move April up here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna space these out so that I have enough information ready to add there. And I'm gonna leave this for now. But for example, I'm gonna go back to my bullet journal page and I'm going to create the month view now. So the month view should really include your tasks and your calendar events coming up. So I'm going to add a little task area with header tasks and I'm going to add a real simple few bullets to get you started. And of course we're going to be creating a template out of this so we're naturally going to keep it really simple. And then I'm going to add a table in line. And the reason why I want to do this is because I want to add the calendar view, but I want it to look like how Ryder does it in his feature. So I'm going to put calendar. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this tab over to here. I'm going to make this one smaller and I'm going to create this one as the number of the day so that it's relevant for every single month that I create it for. So I've got number and I've got day and I haven't needed to change that. So here we go. So I'm gonna put one, two, three, and list out all of the days for the month. So do remember this, once you've created the template in which we'll be using in this feature, you actually won't have to keep repeating this, so do not worry. Now, as you can see here, I've got the day, and when you have that month available, and you know like the first starts on a Tuesday, then you can add Tuesday there. Now the final thing you need to do here is turn this one into a text area and just add what's happening. So once I add that, I'm just going to make a little bit more space for it. And as you can see, I've pretty much got my month view ready. Now, as I was mentioning, this is dead simple, so we're not really going to go much further than that. So if I go over to day view, what I'm actually going to do in day view is simply create an area for my tasks and also an area for any related note to the bottom. So just below here, seeing as we're creating a template out of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use the traditional uh, bullet journal notifications almost uh, of what each of the messages mean. So in this case, I'm going to keep a bullet as a task. So that actually equals a task. I'm going to put a checklist. So that's simply to do on the basic blocks as a, so just delete that previous one, as an event. And I'm going to add a, I believe it's called a toggle list <clears throat> as a note. And finally, there's something called your signifier, which is an important task that you need to complete. Normally inside a bullet journal, you add a little star next to it. But in this case, I'm gonna put a bullet and call it the signifier. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to add a yellow color to it. So it is an important task, essentially, so that's nice and clear. So that's my basic structure done. Um, what I might do is just below these add some dividers. So there we go. I'm going to go out to the bullet journal area. And as you can see, I've pretty much done the structure of all of these guys, which is great. Now, I'm not going to create a template for the future log because 
I probably will just add to this or change it as I go. Uh, it's not really necessarily needed. Or you could create a template if you wanted to for six months, but really not necessary. Month view, I'm going to create a template for and day view. So all I'm going to do is press the slash and type in template button. Now I'm going to start with the monthly one. So I'm going to call this template add new month. And I'm going to just give that a capital. So add new month, what I want to do is I want to delete the page that's in there. And I'm actually going to drag the current monthly view that we've got here. And I'm going to press close. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this one up here. So it's really to the right hand side. I'm going to shuffle everything up so it's in line and neat uh, with everything else. So great, I've got a monthly button template and I will demonstrate that afterwards. I'm also going to do the same for a daily view. So all I have to do is add new day and do the very same is just drag that daily view up here and press close. Now if I drag this one up here, I've got a new month view and a new day view. So great, I have pretty much got the structure of this bullet journal inside of Notion already. So I'm going to create a new month view first. I'm actually gonna start by doing that one. And as you can see, a new month view has created and it's actually opened it up for me. Now if I take this month view and just pop it below the future log, the first thing I'm gonna do is rename it and call it November because that's this month. So there we go, I've got November done. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna click add new day. I'm gonna get a new day view. Obviously it opens up straight away. If I go here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna call it uh, the, uh, what's the day today? And what you can do is you can actually title it today, but you could do that inside of the this one here. So for example, if I needed to just quickly make an edit to the title of it, I'm going to put today because essentially it will take today's date and then when today's date is gone, it will take the previous date. So uh, that's a neat way of doing it. So here we are. I've got uh, my November and I've got today. I'm going to start by starting to populate November. So I'm going to say next month I have, uh, let's see a few of the things I've got next month to do. Uh, let's uh, record uh, a video a day and uh, let me just populate this one. Very simply, you can start adding your tasks to this main area here. These are maybe your most important goals of the month. It could be really simple like that. And you can start adding the days as well as what's happening on those days to your calendar view. So it's really easy to do. And as you can imagine, something that you can populate fairly quickly. Now, if I go over to my bullet journal, you pretty much do the same for today. So if I click in, you can start adding the tasks for today, but they're a bit more specific. So let's add a few. So here we go, I've added a few tasks using the key below. So as you can see, I've got a few tasks here like plan the week ahead and email David Pierce. And I've also got an event as well. So I've used the checkbox as the event. And I've also added a reminder inside of Notion. So for example, it says today at 2 p.m. And I've reminded myself at the date that is uh, at the time of the date. So it's a really easy way. I've also used a toggle to create a note. This way it's hidden from bulking out the task area. But if I wanted to, I could quickly create it into a different area. So the best way to do that is if I wanted to add it and it came extend extended item, what I could do is I could link a page. So if I type in link page, link to page, and I said uh, checklists. So there we go. As you can see, if I ever wanted to move this out, I could easily just drag it into that area and it would go into the linked page that was relevant. So if I had a longer note or a couple of notes that I wanted to sort out for later, I could easily do that there. So the great thing is as well, if I wanted to be clear and be like, okay, plan for week ahead is so important, I could yellow background it and it would be the clear item. As you got used to this, you could probably remove the key from the template and that way you get a bit of a cleaner experience.
Now, of course, using Notion, you can add tons more like tables, calendars, or even boards if you wanted to coordinate tasks a bit better. I know Rebecca uses that in her video, and it looks like a great way to organize what's coming up. So if I go back to here, you can see I've created a really simple process here, a way to plan my future months, a way to have a view of what's coming up in my month, and also a way to view the today. And you're probably wondering, uh, where do I put all of this when it's all done? Now, you could create an archive area like I've done here, a really simple archive area. So for example, when November's done, I could pop it in there, or you could do that same with today. You could actually create a day archive, but it's a good way if you wanted to, to actually see past days and any journals, because some people use this as a journal as well, as a methodology to write out something every morning. So you could even add that section to your today area. Now, you're probably wondering, checklists, what are these guys? Now, you could pretty much start any checklist you like, like a shopping list, for example. And if I type that one in, add a lovely icon, I don't know why that came up. There we go. You can start adding a ch shopping list straight away, like uh, broccoli. Um, I don't know. So you could start adding any checklist you like. And of course, if it was relevant to the today area, you could easily add it in there for reference. So for example, link page, and I go down and I type in shopping list. So you can see that appears there and it's easily linkable there. So guys, this is a really basic demonstration of how you can create a bullet journal there. Again, it's not something that's gonna go hideously in advance. And again, it's really customizable to what you work with, but it pretty much looks like the one I created the other day. So we have done it and recreated it from scratch. Although I have adapted a few things, as you can see here, I, I put the title in these ones and I wasn't using the app today, but you can see here that it pretty much resembles the same thing. So guys, hopefully that gave you a nice overview. Please do try the Skillshare class. Uh, I am adding five additional features to it. If you're watching on Skillshare, uh, thank you very much. Feel free to join me here on YouTube too. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for stopping by today. Make sure to have a great day, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.